in this video. This is on the EOG, oops, EOG inactive release test explanation for questions 6 through 10, starting with number 6. Sharon made a scatter plot comparing the shoulder heights of dogs to their weight. Sharon's dog has a shoulder height of 28 inches. Using a linear model, what is the best prediction of her dog's weight? Okay, so they're telling me that this is a scatter plot, okay, which I can see, and they're also saying that Sharon's dog has a shoulder height of 28 inches, so that's important, okay, and they want me to use a what? A linear model, okay, so a line of best fit. Now, they want the best prediction of what? Her dog's weight, okay? Well, if I notice, this is where it says height, and this is where it says weight. They're giving me the height, okay? So I know that it's a height of 28. So I'm going to kind of make my dotted line like this, and then I'm going to stop. Because what I realize is I need a line of best fit. They've given me some dots. I don't this is calculator inactive, so I can't calculate a line of best fit. So to the best of my ability, I need to draw a straight line that fits the data. Okay? My line's not going to be perfect. Okay? But I want it to try to hit some of the points and to fit the data. Just like close uh, fit a person, the line should fit the dot. Okay, so I'm going to see where they cross. On my graph, it looks like they're going to cross here. So if I kind of follow that across, rough, but it's somewhere between 100 and 110. When I look at my answer choices, the first option is at 85 pounds. Well, that would be right here. That doesn't make sense. The next option would be at 90 pounds, right here. Based on my red line, that doesn't work. 120 would be all the way at the top. That's way too big. So the only one that makes sense is C. Number 7, also calculator inactive. It says, what is the value of... 0.36 repeating times 11 halves, or 11 over 2. To be able to answer this question successfully, you have to remember how to write repeating decimals as a fraction. Remember, however many decimals are repeating, that's how many nines you use in the denominator. So since two different numbers, 3 and 6, are being repeated, I'm going to use two nines in the denominator. That is how you write 0.36 repeating as a fraction. Now I need to multiply it to 11 over 2. Okay, well you can, if you want to, you can say 36 times 11, and you can say 99 times 2. But to me, that's a lot of work. You're going to have some big numbers going on. What I would like to do is to cross multiply. Sorry, not cross multiply, cross reduce. So, since 2 goes into itself one time, and it goes into 36 18 times, that's half of 36, because they're both even numbers, I can do that. The other thing that I can do is since 11 goes into itself once, and 11 goes into 99 nine times, when I multiply across now, I'm going to get 18 times 1, which is 18 over 9. Okay? Well, this is grid of response, which means I'm going to be have my little boxes. I can reduce the fraction, but I don't have to. If I want to enter it 1, 8, slash, slash 9, that is an equivalent and correct answer. If I know that 18 divided by 2, sorry, 18 divided by 9 is 2, and I would rather just bubble in 2, that's also equivalent. If I multiply this out, let's see. Um, 6 times 1 is 6, some 3 is 3, placeholder 6, 3 times 1 is 3. 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 9, 1, 6, 2 is 18, 3, 1, 9 is 18, 3, 1, 98, okay? The other option, if you had reduced it at all, you would have gotten 396 divided by 198. Well, the problem is you're not going to have that many boxes you can grid, okay? You're not going to have 396 slash 1, 9, 8. Okay? They're not going to give you that many boxes. So you would have had to reduce it. If you wanted to, another way you could have reduced it, let's say you just said 36 over 99 times 11 over 2. 
And let's say you only decided to reduce the 11. Then your answer would be 36 over 9 times 2 is 18. If you want to leave that as your answer instead of reducing, you can do that. 3, 6, slash, 1, 8. Okay? So for grid response, as long as your answer is equivalent to the correct answer, okay, that is fine. So this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. There's lots of options. But it has to fit in the boxes. Okay, number eight. What is the sum of all the integers between 19 and 77? So a couple key words. Sum, that means to add. What are integers? Okay, they are positive and negative whole numbers. Got to know that. Now, square root of 19 and square root of 77 are not perfect squares. So I need to estimate them. Well, I know that 19 is going to be in between 4 squared, which is 16, and 5 squared, which is 25. 19 falls between here. So when I'm doing a number line, that's where I'll put it. Now for 77, that's going to be between 64, which is 8 squared, and 9 squared, which is 81. 77 is going to be in between these two. So now I'm going to draw my number line. Okay, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, square root of 19 is between 4 and 5. And the square root of 77 is between 8 and 9. The question said, what is the sum of all the integers what? Between. Well, between would be this, 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Those are the ones that are between. 5 plus 6 gives you 11. 7 plus 8 gives you 15. 11 plus 15 gives you 26, which is the correct answer. Okay, this one's a little bit bigger. It says on the number line, let point P represent the largest integer value. That is less than 407. Let point Q represent the largest integer value. That is less than negative square root of 68. What is the distance between P and Q? Okay. So again, I'm going to estimate the square root of 407. Okay, that is going to be between 20 squared, which is 400, and 21 squared, which I think is 441, but it doesn't matter, you know it's between 20, whatever the next number is. The square root of negative 68, well that's got to be between 8 squared, which is 64, and, oops, sorry, 8, which is 8 and 9, because 8 squared is 64, and 9 squared is 81, okay? Now I'm going to draw my number line. I'm not going to draw every single number because that would take forever. Okay, what I am going to do is just do some place orders here. I've got negative, so I've got negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7. That gives me a general idea. Here's going to be 0. Here's going to be 10. It's kind of like a placeholder. And then I'm going to have 19, 20, 21, and 22. We know what's in between there. We don't need to write this all out. Now, square root of 407 is going to be in between here. Right there. And, sorry, and I should have said that better. It said point P, okay, point P represents the largest value that's less than the square root of 407. Okay? The largest value that's less than. Well, if this is 441, the square root of 441, and this is the square root of 400, the biggest number that's still less than 407 is, is 20. So this represents point P. Now on the other side, I'm going to plug in um, 68. We already know that negative square root of 68, okay, is going to be in between the square root of um, 64, which would be negative 64, and this would be negative 81 if I'll take your square root, okay. Now it says that Q is the largest integer value that is less than this number. Remember, everything on this side is less, and everything on this side, this is the less way, this is more, 
Okay, so when it says less than, they want the biggest number that is less than this. Well, less than that means it's what? Negative 9. So that is point Q. Okay, the question, let's go back to the question. It's a very multi set problem. What is the distance between T and Q? Well, here's Q, here's T. Well, how many spots do I have to jump to get to 0? 9. How many spots do I have to jump to get to 20? 20. So a total of how many, how many tallies are they going to jump? 20 plus 9, which is 29, which is the answer. All right, one more for this video. It says, what is the value? And they want you to simplify this operation. No calculator. There's lots of different steps that you could choose to do first. I always like to get my negatives out of the way. Now, remember what we said, that if they're negative, they're unhappy, they want to be moved, right? Where can they go? To the opposite location. So, if this guy's unhappy, he needs to come down. If this guy's unhappy, he needs to come down. And if this person's unhappy, they need to go up. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite my problem after I've moved people to make them happy. Now these two are coming down because I just rewrote them. They're happy where they were. So is 5 to the 0. So I'm just going to put that right here. Now, the two items in red are coming down. So 4 to the 1st. Once I move them, they become happy. So their x going becomes positive. And I'm going to put 5 to the 3rd on top. These are all being multiplied. Okay. The next thing I want to do is combine the ones that are the same. So I've got 2, 5, okay? And anything to the 0 power is 1. So if I really wanted to, I could just completely delete that 1, 5. But for right now, when you're adding, when you're multiplying fractions, they have the so Lord. When you are multiplying exponents that have the same base, multiplying um, exponents of the same base, you add the exponents. So this is really going to give me 5 to the second, okay? So when I have when I have four to the fourth times four to the first, I'm going to add the exponent, which is going to give me four to the fifth. Okay, so that's just a reminder. So what I have is once I've added them, okay, this gives me five to the second on the bottom and four to the fifth on the bottom. The top, they're not alike, so I can't do anything there. I can just bring them across. At this point, I need to do the division. I can only do it for the ones that are alike. So I'm going to rewrite this with pictures so that you know where they all went. Okay. I had five, two fives on the bottom right here, and then I had three fives on top right here. Three fours on top right here, and four to the fifth, which is five fours on the bottom. Now I'm going to cancel out the ones that are similar. So this goes, I can take one from the top and one from the bottom. One from the top, one from the bottom. One from the top, one from the bottom. This leaves me with five on top and four times four on the bottom. Well, what's four times four? Sixteen. So when I go to grid this in, I'm going to write five slash one six. That is the answer, and that is the last one for this video.